Hey what's up guys, so I've been really hyped for the next league and I've been making a bunch of builds and recently uh, I've gotten into making more like budgety league starter builds, you know stuff you can make in like day 2, day 3 once you get into maps and some of them seem to turn up pretty good so I'd like to show you some. So the first one is a burning arrow elementalist. The first really nice thing about this is you don't have to use any uniques at all until you're like deep into maps. And the idea of this build is you're using Burning Arrow with Snipe and Burning Arrow has like a huge damage effectiveness so scaling flat damage is really effective with it. And since I'm an Elementalist with Shaper of Flames I can scale any flat damage so you know fire, cold, lightning, whatever. So I have like you know some flat damage on the weapon. I'm using Wrath Aura, Anger Aura with Tomine Blessing with uh, Eldritch Battery. And yeah, it ends up like a pretty pretty big ignite for a pretty garbage gear. And the tree is something like this. You know, it's only level 75. I didn't really know where to put more points. Ideally, you would use like a cluster setup, but you're probably not gonna get a cluster setup in like early early league. So I just left it out. And also, I heard snipe kind of it's kind of sucks to play. So I went with elementalist, or I mean. I went with golems, so hopefully that helps uh, with the playstyle, which is like crit and attack speed. And yeah, another really nice thing about this build is it's it has some pretty nice and straightforward upgrades. Like for example, barracks respite fixes all your clear, and you can like drop your uh, ignite prole for example for more damage. Or like you find the devouring diadem, now you can like uh, respect two points, maybe get like an extra aura. You know, get a Cinder Swallow, Daesian Dawn, maybe you, maybe later on you can get your Cluster Jewels, like it, it has like some really nice upgrades. And you know, the damage ramps up quite nicely as well. The main problem of this build I see is it's kind of squishy, it's, it's pretty tough to scale defense I think for this kind of character. The only real thing I have is like I have a bunch of golems that would uh, face tank stuff and maybe taunt, taunt some mobs off you. But that's about it. We'd have to actually make the character to see how the playstyle is. You could use something like Cloak of the Flame, but eh, I don't know. We'd have to try it right out. And so that's the first build. The next build is a Dead Eye Toxic Rain character. So I think most of you already know Toxic Rain is a really nice league starter. Uh, but I decided to do a few things differently. So I went as a Dead Eye. Mainly because I think Tailwind is super strong for leveling and just getting into early maps. It speeds it up a lot. And also Dead, with Dead Eye needs like very little investment to feel tanky. So something like Wind Ward, Acrobatics and Wind Dancer make you insanely tanky against the initial hit. So you have to invest very little into defenses and just can keep blasting. Later on you can also get like Kintsugi, that's an additional layer of defense. And you can see the damage is pretty good. Uh, another really nice thing about Dead Eye is, I think this uh, Bastion's point is really underrated. So this makes Mirage Arrow like a 90% damage multiplier as long as you keep your uh, Mirage Archers up. And it's pretty easy to get them up if you're just running around or dodging. And it's like a consistent damage output. Because uh, usually Toxic Rain you just stand there and you hold down the attack button, that's the only way you do damage. The sucky thing about Dead Eye is that Endless Munitions is kind of a dead node. So if you don't know, Toxic Rain has kind of a diminishing return mechanic on additional arrows. So the break point is pretty much if you have 39% increased AoE, you're gonna have like about 4 overlapping pods and the increased arrows don't really affect it. So you can have like 10 arrows and on average 4 are still only gonna hit the boss. But it does help a bit with like uh, clear speed, I guess. And what else? So for the gear, so thieves. I really like the combination of thief storm and then quill rain. And you can source these pretty early on. And what these do it like pretty much the entire leveling and mapping. You just have infinite uh, mana and life sustain, and it makes it super nice. And even like uh, you know a plus three attack speed ticket is like just. A little bit better than a quill rain, so I think this is a godlike uh, godlike bow for early on. The other gear are just rares, 
you know, life res, some suppress uh, spell damage. Yeah. The main problem I see with this build is that it's kind of you kind of run out of things to scale pretty quickly. So like if you have a good bow, you know, maybe you steal a good good ascendancy like this Pathfinder ascendancy is really nice to steal. You get like a good watcher's eye, maybe some cluster jewels, plus one on your uh, amulet, and that's kind of it. Everything else after that gets really really expensive and it's just not worth it. But I think as a starter it's pretty nice. And the last build I want to show off is a Morohi Urki Inquisitor. So this build might be a little bit of a gamble I think, because you kind of need to source a Morohi Urki and Heatshiver. Maybe like once you get into red maps. And the idea is you want to abuse the huge hit of Morohi Urki and like negate, negate the shitty downside of uh, low attack speed. And two skills that are really nice with that is Shockwave Support that just hits for you on a cooldown. And Frozen Legion you summon some dudes that hit for you as well, so you don't have to worry about scaling attack speed at all. And since the hits are really massive, like I'm talking, you know, Frozen Legion has a 30 million ailment threshold on like pretty crappy gear, it's really easy to freeze everything like up to pinnacle bosses, so Heat Shiver made a lot of sense. This just doubles your damage against the frozen enemies, but it's like your damage is split between Gold and Fire, so Inquisitor. It's like a no-brainer, since in uh, Inevitable Judgment fixes all your penetration problems. The other nodes are also pretty decent. Like, I also, I really love these concentrated uh, ground nodes. And the tree something like this, you know, you just grab all the maze stuff, elemental stuff, crit, endurance charges. Grabbing Unwavering Stance in the end. Yeah, pretty simple. Uh, you, de you do need some accuracy nodes, because Marohi Marohirki has a minus accuracy rating. So these like these are pretty important, <laughs> I lose like an insane amount of damage without them. And uh, yeah, this should be like a pretty nice all around character I think. It's tanky, it has consistent damage, pretty good AoE, it doesn't cost that much. But it's probably not gonna be the fastest just because like it's locked to its attack speed, you know, you're just cycloning around or or frost blinking around. But it should be pretty nice all around. Uh, the big problem I see is that you know if you if you can't get Marohi or Gint Heatshiver early on and you're you're like in red maps with like some random rares, the damage drops off massively. And you know, eight hundred K with some random 200 mace isn't like the end of the world, but it's, it probably doesn't feel that great. Uh, yeah. So thanks for checking out my builds. If you have any skill ideas you want me to try out, make like a starter, let me know, and I'll see you later.